Hey you, this thing, I don't like this thing. And it physically hurt me to play so much. I'm not even joking, but we'll get to that later. In 2020, in addition to all of the other incredible world changing events that happened, something just as important occurred. We were graced with a sequel to one of the most beloved indie games of all time. Super Meat Boy Forever! It was even being made by Team Meat, just like the first game, and the stars were aligned. However, when the game actually released... Hey yo, is that Jetpack Joyride? It wasn't what fans were expecting, and even years later, the tune about it never really changed. So this year, I finally got Super Meat Boy Forever on a Steam sale and decided to stream the entire game from start to credits. After all, I just did a review on the original game. I played through it at least a dozen times, so I mean, come on, how bad could it? <laughs> Super Meat Boy Forever hurt me in every conceivable way, and I now need therapy. Let's talk meat and rationalize why I feel the need to beat it so much. The essence of Super Meat Boy is in the movement. The game didn't just make a name for itself because of how violently difficult it is, but for also how genuinely good of a platformer it was. It was challenging, but it was challenging for good reasons. If you died, it wasn't just because you didn't know what to do or you were caught off guard. It was a pure and simple skill issue. I know I'm going to be repeating parts of my review here, but let's talk about the level design for a second. Super Meat Boy does an amazing job of introducing elements of danger into the mix very slowly, such that the player has plenty of time to register them. In the first world alone, you see saws from the second level onwards, but it isn't until at least the fourth level that you can actually die from them. Then over the next 15 or so levels, they introduce you to saws that slide, saws that rotate, and saws that and all of it comes together to skill check you in the penultimate level that's literally called the test. The acclimation to obstacles was subtle, the skill check was not. It is a little ironic though, because the next level is the real test, when you're faced with an example of peak boss design in the form of Lil Slugger's map, a fast paced run through a level that's been filled to the brim with every single obstacle that the forest had to offer, and by this point, you have earned the right to conquer all of them again. And now to break away from my spiel in the review, the thing is, all of that fast-paced hype that I just mentioned around Little Slugger kind of betrays something I don't think a lot of people realize about Super Meat Boy. The game is actually really slow. Now obviously, I know you're looking at all this gameplay and giving your screen the side eye, but I'm serious. Listen, it's not about how fast a game can be played. It's about how slowly it can be played. Super Meat Boy is a wonderful example of an easy to learn but hard to master formula. There are only two buttons for the entire game and those buttons make you go faster or jump. That's it. It's on you to apply those two things in order to win and 90% of the time you are allowed to do so at your own pace. Let's talk about something I didn't mention in my review. On any given screen, you can generally see a lot of the level. And again, 90% of the time, you don't have anything that's pushing you to move quickly other than your own desire for an A plus time. That means you can just simply observe what's on the screen ahead of you and decide how best to go about it. You see these little slime guys on walls and blocks, so you know that you just have to wait for them to move in order to clear a spot for you. You see these little bubble dudes, and after watching them for a while, realize their trajectory is consistent and always on the same predictable angle, so you can time your way going around them. You see these black mob portals, so you can always be reminded that you're in hell right now! Super Meat Boy is a game that can be played incredibly fast if you're really good at it but it doesn't force you to play it really fast. If you're still learning, the muscle memory's not there yet, and you haven't memorized every level by heart, you can take your time, take in your surroundings, figure out where you're going, question your life choices, get your dreams crushed, get a new dream, start a YouTube channel because the second dream didn't work, I feel like we're off topic. Look, the point is that Super Meat Boy is great at conditioning the player. The game's hard, but it's not unfair. Most of the time. 
The game was designed knowing that it was hard, but it also gives you all of the time and tools necessary to figure it out. You can almost always see what's coming in advance, and you can take your time to prepare for it. Likewise, because of how the game mechanically functions, it's okay to make mistakes. The controls are so tight and the motion of the platforming is so fluid that even if you flub a jump, you have the ability to usually recover it provided that you can react accordingly. Not sure about the timing of a jump? Just keep wall jumping over and over and stay on that one little bit of wall until you're comfortable with going. Put yourself in a bad position because you ran into a bad spot? Just turn around and get yourself out of it. You have the time. You have the tools. Now see how you can apply both of them until you make your own solution and get that high score. Forever looked at that one auto-scroller level in the Rapture and said, let's make an entire game about that. It took everything that we just talked about in terms of pacing, learning, and player huh? control and told them all to suck a meat boy. Who was this game for? Who wanted this? It's not for fans of Super Meat Boy. It's not for fans of other Newgrounds games that Super Meat Boy featured. Hell, it's not even for fans of platformers. It's like someone stood up during a pitch meeting for a Super Meat Boy sequel and said, you know, I really feel like we should make it more like my favorite Mario game, Super Mario Run, except bullshit. Okay, let's just hold on a minute. What? You should eat this. Why? But not you when you're hungry. I, you, oh, that's actually better. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm not sorry. Let me level with you. Super Meat Boy Forever is not a bad game. And as much as the contrast between that statement and the preceding rant just gave both of us whiplash, Forever was not incompetently made in a vacuum. It's not a bad game. It's just a bad sequel. Yeah, it expands on the gameplay ideas present in the original game, technically. Yes, it ties up the story in a nice bow because it resolves Dr. Fetus' story arc by finally having him make a friend, kind of. Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. But Forever has a completely different feel in a completely different genre, and even the characters are different. Dr. Fetus is a real core character this time around, but he's been reduced to a petulant shell of what he used to be. Before, he used to be cocky, capable, and he even won a lot of the time. Little Slugger was only brought down because of the squirrels, Meat Boy would have died in the end if Brownie didn't save him, and he kills Meat Boy several times on screen. Dr. Fetus successfully beating Meat Boy in a duel is the entire reason for a full chapter of the original game. The only reason OG Dr. Fetus lost is because Meat Boy just keeps respawning and he can't stop him. But now, that character has just been reduced to I'm petty and I flip people off as his whole personality. With regards to the game itself, if you haven't realized yet, Super Meat Boy Forever is an auto-runner. Not an auto-scroller, where the screen of a platforming game moves at a set rate independent of the player, but an auto-runner, where your character automatically moves without player input. With that in mind, remember how one of the big points I went over in this video with Super Meat Boy was that it was a fast-paced game that you were allowed to play slowly? If you tried something and it didn't work, you could take your time and think about the problem in order to come up with a solution. But in Forever, you can't do that because the game decides the pace for you. You can't stop moving unless you hit a wall. And then we have another issue. The average block size that the levels are made out of is substantially larger. In Super Meat Boy, almost everything was composed of the same one block size that Meat Boy is. But in Forever, that average building block is much larger. This results in walls that are around three times as thick, and that means that obstacles and enemies that would normally be in your field of view are that much more off screen. Because of that, you have much less visual information in front of you at any given time that you can use to make smart decisions with. Instead, the game literally forces you into situations where you have a fraction of a second to understand the challenge in front of you before it kills you. And the only way to actually learn anything is to die over and over and over and over and over again, hopefully piecing together the very limited information you can observe in those fractions of a second so that you can put it all together in a way that will actually amount to a solution that gets you to the next section where you have to do the whole thing over again.
good job. I also mentioned semi-encouragingly, semi-jokingly, the ideas of not having your muscle memory yet, nor having all the levels memorized by heart, but in forever, you can't do either of those. Not only is it an auto runner, meaning that almost all personal agency over where your character is has been taken out of the player's control, but the levels are also procedurally generated. Every level is composed of pre-made segments that are randomly slotted together. So unless you've played this game so much that you have seen every possible segment in every world, in every configuration, it's literally impossible for you to memorize the maps and optimize a route, much less come up with one that's all your own. This is why I said this game isn't even appealing for platforming fans, because it's not a platforming game. It's a puzzle game, skinwalking as a platformer in your front yard. Every random segment is effectively its own individual puzzle, and the supreme majority of these puzzles have one and only one solution in terms of the inputs necessary to get past them. The epitome of that design philosophy is the final boss of the game, which I won't spoil in this video, don't worry, assuming anyone cares. I'll probably make an entire video breaking down Forever's final boss, because it is easily one of the worst I have ever played. But I will tell you this, the final boss of the game effectively requires you to become a speedrunner. It is a very long sequence of extremely specific inputs with very tight frame windows. And if you make a single mistake, it is a guaranteed death. One single misinput is a dead run. And for context of how bad it is, the VOD of me beating Super Meat Boy Forever is five and a half hours long. The final boss took me an hour and 20 minutes, roughly 24% of the entire time spent in the game was on one single stage. And doing that much precise repetitive action for that long very nearly injured me. I'm being completely deadpan serious now. I'm dropping the intonation. If it had a phase two, I would have ended the stream without beating it. My thumb and tendons connecting to it were very sore, and after using a claw grip and moving my whole arm to mash instead of using my thumb to save my thumb the damage, the place where my bicep connects to my forearm was in actual pain before the game was over. No amount of classic Mario Party has ever dealt me that much physical damage. I, it's actually insane. However, the game does a genuinely good job of introducing new elements and teaching the player how to deal with them in spite of the inherent disadvantages posed by the pacing issues of being an auto runner. The cutscenes are wonderfully animated and give a lot of personality. The final boss and everything leading up to it is cartoonishly epic. The random segments of the levels always fit together perfectly and seamlessly and you never notice. And the procedural generation actually does something incredibly interesting. From what I've read online, the game actually selects what segments to compose your next level out of based on your skill level shown by previous levels. Meaning that Team Meat have effectively invented skill-based matchmaking for a single player auto runner game. <laughs> Whether that's good or bad, make of that what you will. But it is certainly interesting. At this point, I think it goes without saying that the reason Forever is a bad sequel comes down to just one thing. While Super Meat Boy Forever is another game in the Super Meat Boy universe, Super Meat Boy Forever is not a Super Meat Boy game. Thank you all so much for watching. This has actually been the single most painful game I have ever played. It hurt my arm with Carpal Tunnel, it hurt my brain with the puzzles, and it hurt my heart with everything else. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing or supporting the channel over on Patreon if you want extra content, and I will see you, yes you, next time.